Hey guys, and welcome back to my home and kitchen. I wanted to just jump on here and uh, do a video that I want to stop and thank the people that actually have been watching my videos and who have subscribed and who have liked. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I went from having very little subscribers to having a hundred, I think it was 178. Not a lot, but I really do appreciate the ones that are watching and the sweet comments that I am getting because um, they, they make me feel really good and I appreciate it. Um, okay, I have been having some major issues with my phone, my camera tonight. And I have done this probably, this is our fourth attempt. So I wanted to ask Larry a few questions and he's answered them a few times. And I'm hoping that I can get it on video this time. Um, I'm gonna start out with um, how you grew up here in the foothills of North Carolina. Um, what'd you do? Your daily activities or, you know, what, what did you do to pass the time, so to speak? Well, my, my great grandfather was my hero. I, I was his shadow. And actually, the house that we just built two years ago is on his original place. Uh, my days consisted of talking to him, him showing me things. Uh, there was a lot of great people in this community as far as kids and older adults. They was willing to share things with you. Uh, I know my great grandpa, he showed me how to sharpen an axe, a knife. Showed me showed me stuff as a kid that kids today the the parents would be just outraged because somebody showed somebody how to sharpen a pocket knife or a kitchen knife. And yeah. I'm talking about like when I was four, five, six, seven year old, you know. He he showed me the the real world. Uh, I remember him saying, he said, boy, he said, I'm not too smart, but he said, if, if you can tell time count money, you'll make it. Uh, as far as playing, me and my older cousins, all we done was run through the woods. Uh, I mean, we may be a ridge over, and I could hear my mom and grandma calling for me. Well, it may take us 30 minutes to walk back. But, I mean, they wasn't overly concerned. They just wanted to know where we was at, make sure we was okay. They was doing the, the motherly thing, the women thing, whatever. The men, they didn't care. You could stay gone all day. As long as you're out of hair, it made no difference. But, now, when you was growing up, um, you, you didn't say, but was this... Uh, a tobacco farm or what, yeah. what? I mean... I mean, let me just put, put it this way. Um, you know, when we were growing up, you lived on a farm. Most of the people did that were in the rural area grew up on farms. Yeah. And normally around this area would have been tobacco, normally. And that's what I grew up on is a, a tobacco farm, and, and he did as well. And you had to work. Yeah, well, I mean, you had you had to work in it. Uh, now we we had a garden every year as well. Yeah, I everybody mean, had a garden. And, you grew your own food, right? And we never considered it a homestead. Um, that was really never heard of until the past few years. 
People want to get back to the old ways. Is what, what it amounts to. What it to. amounts to is people and wanting to get back to the way that it used to be back when we were growing up. But, but I mean, it was, was just a way to survive. And it was, you know, God tells us to, you know, put away for a year. So that's what 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 we done. And now it's considered homesteading. And some people have been doing this their whole life. It, it's not, you know, we can every year. Well, what do you mean homesteading? Where you have horses or cows and goats and chickens and whatever. And is considered homesteading now. And you're like, what is that? <laughs> I mean, We've been doing this mess for a long time. I, mean, I, I, I was raised that way. You just prepare yourself. It's being prepared. I mean, you make sure you've got enough food for the winter, where it's meat, vegetables, whatever, uh, where it's freezing, canning, uh, dehydrating, whatever. And, and I will say our dehydrating was like putting on a well, you you put, put in an on old a screen, yeah. It, <laughs> I, I can remember my great aunt, one of the greatest women I've ever been around. She would take and put apples in it. All the boys, they was yeah. rowdy. They wrecked cars, whatever. So they brought them all home. Well, she made use of them wrecked cars. She would put racks of fruit. Yeah. Inside of them, and she would dry apples, apples especially. Yeah, any, that's what I remember is the any, apples. Any kind of fruit, yeah. she would put them inside the old cars, whatever. I mean, it's, it's just another way of looking. It's called looking after yourself. You can call it homesteading, whatever. Yeah. It's a way to look after yourself to make sure that you and your family has got enough to eat. Mm-hmm. Now, it may not be exactly what you want to eat, but there was always something to eat. Okay. Well, now let me ask you this. What did you do to pass the time as kid, um, in teen years, you know, up until you, you moved out? Now, a lot of people at the age of 18, they typically move out. This, this, if they're not going to go to school, uh, they're going to go get a job. And typically, where I come from, you moved out of your parents' house. Yeah. Well, as far as the kid, yeah. Me and my older cousins, every little tree in the woods, we climb it till we could pull it over. I can't remember what they called it at the time, but you just rode the tree down to the ground, climb grapevines, run up down the, run up down the creek. We, we rode ponies, horses, just anything outside, walked, fished, hunted. I mean, I know I, I got a, a fox double barrel when I was 12 years old. It was 12 gauge. And people today would go berserk if a 12 year old boy had a 12 gauge shotgun. They would. Yeah. I mean, Times are different. Times are different. Uh, well, maybe brag a little on myself. When I was 12 years old, I was more mature than a lot of 30-year-olds are today. That is true. Because 30-year-olds today, most of them, they fall out if they think they got to sweat. Yeah. Uh, we drove up. If you need to make some extra money in the summer, you prime the bike. Mm -hmm. Ain't no big deal. You just get out there and sweat, grunt, work, yeah. go on. And that's what we done. That's what I done. Um, my grandparents uh, were tobacco farmers. Uh, my dad owned uh, a little bit of tobacco, not a lot, but a little bit. And he worked, of course. He was a lineman. And uh, he worked out of town quite often. And uh, so... Once my grandpa stopped, you know, work, having tobacco, I started helping the community where I lived. I would help the farmers out. Um, shout out to Linda Peel. Uh, that was one of the people that I helped. And uh, 
a lot of others um and my siemens i could go name all you know keep going but um that's just something you've done you know if we didn't have it you you were expected to help other people and uh I, he was the same way i'm sure oh yeah i can remember my uncle one time they were six of us he told us when we started priming the bike, he said, if all six of y'all would stay with me all summer, he said, I'll take you to Darlington Race in Darlington, South Carolina. That's uh, Labor Day weekend. And people in this area was, <laughs> I, I mean, you just grew up race fans. Yeah, I'm still did. a big race fan. I'm not a big, big fan of the big tracks and all that, but I'm talking about your local tracks whatever, and it was a big deal to get to go to Darlington. That's one of the best races they are, in my opinion. Well, all us kids, we wanted to go. So we all got together and said, look, they can't neither one of us stay out, because if one of us stays out, none of the rest of us gets to go. We put in the whole crop that fall, and my uncle said, well, I told y'all, if y'all stay with me, we take the dog to the race. So we loaded up in, in a single cab pickup, man. <laughs> Six All of y'all. Huh? I don't know, 12, 13, whatever. Oh, my goodness. All, all the kids were the young boys. We rode in the back. The two adults rode in the front. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, and we ended up going to the to race. He kept his part of the deal. And we kept it. He got his crop in. Yes, it cost him a little more at the end, but still, it's that's one of the memories that that a lot of people will never get to do because right. six teenage boys, the whole crop of the biker, and get it in. He take us to the race. Uh, it was it was a even unheard of in our time. Yeah, today. You ain't gonna get six teenage boys to do nothing except play on the computer. That's the truth. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, all right. Uh, that may be bad to say. I mean, I know all of them's not bad. It's it's just cause mom and daddy's money. And they don't have to do nothing. That's just my opinion. And if you don't agree with it, that's fine too. Well, um, I am going to leave it at that. Larry's words of wisdom. Um, I want to thank you guys for hanging with me tonight. Um, you have no idea if I get this video put out, the effort that was put <laughs> trying to get it out. Am I right? Yeah, I've told 15 stories, and so far they <laughs> none of them took. So. <laughs> That's the truth. He's told many stories, and I'm sitting here and laugh, but. Anyway, I want to thank y'all for hanging with us, and we will talk y'all. We will talk to y'all the next one. No, we won't. Nope. <laughs> you won't get to see me much. We will catch y'all on the next one. That does sound better. Bye.